Applying to graduate school can be a great way to develop yourself as a scientist and find your own identity within physics. It can be a really intimidating process. You might be thinking, oh, my grades aren't very good. I won't get into a graduate school. You might be worried that you're gonna make the wrong choice. Well, we're here to talk about all of those different things today and to give you some tips to improve the quality of your application. Welcome to our very first YouTube video. My name is Jenna Meineket and I'm a junior research fellow at Oxford. I'm Charlotte Palmer. I'm a postdoctoral researcher also at Oxford. I applied to two graduate schools when I was an undergrad. I applied to UC San Diego and to Oxford and I ended up doing the plasma physics program at Oxford. Um, I also applied for two graduate schools um, and I ended up doing my PhD at Imperial College in London. We have a lot of experience that we have accumulated over the years mm -hmm. and I just kind of felt a bit like a shame not to share it with other people. So today we're here to give you five tips in order to improve the quality of your graduate school application. So our very first tip is to get research experience. I cannot stress this enough. By getting research experience, you allow yourself to dabble in a few different types of ongoing research and determine what field is best for you. Maybe you like particle physics, maybe you wanna do plasma physics, maybe you wanna do astrophysics. You won't know until you try doing research in those fields. So you might be wondering, well, how do we even start getting research experience? In terms of paid internships, the best way to do this if you're in the UK is to look at labs such as the Rutherford Appleton Lab, the Cullum Lab. Um, the IOP, the Institute of Physics, actually has an amazing website. I'm like a massive fan of the IOP. They have listed a few different options to get you started. If you're looking to get research experience in the United States, I would start by looking at the national labs. So look at, for instance, the Lawrence Livermore National Lab, Los Alamos, Sandia, all of these national labs usually have summer internship programs. Also, if you're in the United States, you are in luck because the APS website has, in my opinion, one of the best job search engines for physics. So if you look on the APS jobs portal, there is a tab that says summer research slash internships. You got that from Vickers. Work in Essex County, page 98, right? Yeah, I read that too. Tip two, how to find a PhD advisor. This can be really helpful to help focus your application and just make it stronger. From your final year studies, you might have an idea of the field that you want to work in. So have a look at the papers and um, identify some of the researchers that are, are strong in that field. Have a look on their websites. See, are there any sort of projects or specifically the areas that they research? Does that interest you? And if it does, then get in touch. So they're, they're only human. If you get in touch with them, then um, they can respond and recommend potential reading. They can say what projects they have. The main piece of advice though is researchers are very busy people. So try to keep your email concise, introduce yourself, say that you're interested. And if you've read their website a bit, then you can show to de really demonstrate that you are interested in their specific part of research. Don't write a huge long email because yeah, people are busy. Hopefully you get a response to your email and then you can start a bit more of an in-depth discussion with the advisor about what projects are available, what ideas you have, and that can really help for some of the other um, aspects of the application like the um, research proposal. Tip number three is to create a very strong focused statement of purpose or your research proposal. If you already know what kind of research that you're interested in, it's a lot easier to write your research proposal, but there are a few things that you can do to really make your research proposal stand out. So the first thing is be specific about why you like that type of research. I love carpet. Brick, are you just looking at things in the office and saying that you love them? I love lamp. Demonstrate an understanding of that field. Be specific about your research that you're going to do. You might already have an idea of what kind of experiments or theoretical work that you want to, to do as a graduate student. Make it clear what you are bringing to the table. 
Find what makes you unique as a researcher and really hone in on those details. And the fifth thing I would say here is to really communicate in your research proposal why this research is important. It's not enough to say that you're going to do research. It has to be research that's worth doing. Tip four, how to get a high quality letter of recommendation. For most of your applications, you're gonna have to include at least one recommendation letter. And a good way to get a um, very supportive letter is to be really engaged with your classes and develop a relationship with the person that you're gonna ask for the letter. So ask questions in classes, engage in the research when you're doing an internship. That way, the person who's writing your recommendation really knows who you are, they know that you're enthusiastic and they can write that honestly in, in the letter of recommendation. It's also helpful to provide them with a bit of information to go on. So you can send them your CV, maybe your research proposal. And also if there's a, a list or a job description for the PhD, send them that. And then they can uh, point out how your particular skills really link up with what they're looking for in the PhD. And tip five, which is that good grades can help a lot, but there are a few caveats that we wanna talk about. Many of the more competitive schools use your grades as a screening process to filter through the high volume of applicants that they receive every single year. And so if your grades are not above or at least close to a certain cutoff, it's possible that they might not even look at your application. So by getting good grades in undergrad, it can really afford you more opportunities. But there are two main caveats here that I really wanna talk about. And the first caveat is that just because you have good grades doesn't mean that you're going to be a great scientist. There's a big difference between being able to take exams well and being able to do research well. The second major caveat here is just because your grades are poor in your undergraduate courses does not indicate in any way your future success as a researcher. If you're looking at your grades right now and you're thinking they're not very good, one, it's better to get good grades in your third and fourth years of undergraduate than necessarily in your first and second years. The reason here is that universities wanna see that over time, you're progressing and becoming better at the subject. The second thing here is that it's more important who you work for in graduate school than necessarily where you go. So it actually might not make sense to go to a highly competitive school like MIT because while it is a very good school, it might not have the research program that is right for you. So a perfect example of this is the University of Rochester. At the moment, they are pushing out some of the best plasma physics graduate students, and that's because they have one of the best laser facilities in their backyard, the Omega EP laser. And as a result, all these graduate students are having easy access to an amazing facility. And so they're becoming amazing physicists as a result. So that is just proof that you don't have to go to a big name school to become a big name in physics. Bonus tip, you do not need to be in a physics department to do physics research. I know that might sound totally crazy, but you can be in a tangential field other than physics and still do physics research at all the same physics facilities with all the same physicists. So for instance, at UCLA, some of the leading researchers in particle acceleration are in the electrical engineering department. And so you might be thinking like, well, why does that matter? Who cares what department I'm in? This is really important if you're applying to school in the United States, where in addition to all the things that you normally have to submit in an application, you also have to submit the GREs. Mom, Frankie verbally molested me. Join the club, honey. When you apply to graduate school in the United States, you need to submit a general GRE score along with a subject-specific physics GRE score if you're applying to a physics department. And my personal opinion is that I think the physics GRE is a really good test of how well you can take their test. I don't think it really is a strong indicator of how successful you're going to be in graduate research. A lot of engineering departments don't require a subject-specific GRE score. They only look at your general GRE and more specifically the mathematics score. So this is a way to kind of bypass a really bad test score. So I hope that you found the tips helpful. And if you want to hear more, just write, let's hear more in the comments below. And if you have any tips as well on how to get into graduate school, 
feel free to share them in the comments below. We only wanted to give you our top five tips because we wanted to keep this video pretty short, but there's so much more that we want to say on the topic. And if you have any suggestions for things that you want to hear about, then just let us know. One last thing that we want to say is when the time does come that you're getting your acceptance and your rejection letters, keep in mind that rejection letters are not necessarily a bad thing. Um, I personally view them as blessings in disguise because they're kind of a way for the university to tell you that not that you're not good enough, but that this is a program that might not be right for you, that you might not find happiness in research at certain universities. Also, rejection is quite a considerable part of research, so it's a good thing to get used to. <laughs> so good luck with your applications. We hope you, you know, find the career of, of your dreams. Of your dreams. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. See ya. Bye.